Chlamydia trichomatis, or more commonly known as chlamydia, is a gram-negative bacteria, which is the most common sexually transmitted infection, especially in those who are under 25 years old. Now, chlamydia is a small gram-negative bacterium that lives as an obligate intracellular bacteria, meaning it cannot produce outside the human host cell. The transmission of chlamydia is thought to mostly uh, occur through sexual activity. And therefore, the risk factors include you know, being young and sexually active, having new or multiple sexual partners, sexual activity with an infected person, lack of barrier contra contraception, such as um, not using a condom, and another risk factor is having previous chlamydia infections. Let's talk about the life cycle and the pathophysiology of chlamydia. The life cycle of chlamydia has two major phases that occur over one to three weeks, the incubation period. It is important to note that the two forms of the bacteria include the elementary body, which is infectious, and the reticulate body, which are metabolically active. And this is the body that can reproduce but are not infectious. The elementary bodies invade the epithelial cells of the urogenital tract, changing into reticulate bodies once inside. The reticulate bodies replicate and mature back into the elementary bodies, aggregating together in groups called large inclusion bodies. Once maturation is complete in two to three days, the infected cell ruptures and frees the bacteria to continue the replication process by invading other cells around them. And so these cells are really in infecting and invading all these epithelial cells within the reproductive tract. Due to its unique life cycle, Chlamydia trichomatis cannot be grown in routine bacterial culture. These infected epithelial cells are the cause of urethral inflammation or cervical inflammation in women. In some cases, the infection can migrate up into the reproductive tract and cause pelvic inflammatory disease in women and epididymitis or prostitis in men if they move up towards these regions. As a consequence of this life cycle of chlamydia, it can be transmitted from one person to another through unprotected sexual intercourse. The symptoms of chlamydia infection can range and are slightly different between males and females. In females, chlamydia infections can often be asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms. However, inflammation of the cervix, termed cervicitis, can cause vaginal discharge and pain with sex, termed dyspyrunia. There can be post-coital or intermenstrual bleeding. Infection of the female urethra can cause symptoms really typically of a urinary tract infection, such as frequency and dysuria, pain when peeing. In males, infection of the urethra causes urethritis and can cause pain on urination, dysuria, and scant watery discharge. Complications of chlamydia include pelvic inflammatory disease in women. As we have learned, chlamydia can ascend to the upper reproductive tract, the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries, and can cause this condition. Pelvic inflammatory disease is an important health issue, as it can lead to infertility and chronic pain. Other complications include epididymitis in men, Reiter's disease, which cause joint pain and swelling, triggered after an infection. The classic triad is urethritis, conjunctivitis, and reactive arthritis. Chlamydia can also often accompany another infection, gonorrhea, and so it's important to look for this. Proctitis and pharyngitis occur in both male and woman. Reinfection by chlamydia is common, and so once treated, patients should be 
test it again to make sure they are clear of the infection. Chlamydia during pregnancy can cause complications such as preterm delivery, low birth weight of the baby, ectopic pregnancy, infants born to women with untreated chlamydia are at risk of neonatal conjunctivitis and pneumonia. The differential diagnosis for chlamydia include other sexual transmitted infections and really include gonorrhea, sexually transmitted uh, with the infection Neisseria gonorrhea, bacterial vaginosis, candidal vulvovaginitis, which is a yeast infection of the vagina, trichomoniasis, a common STI caused by a parasite, and pelvic inflammatory disease, another differential. Investigation and diagnosis. Diagnosis is usually through a nucleic acid amplification test, NAT, and it's a test of choice with high sensitivity. It can either be done by oneself using a vaginal swab, a first catch of urine, a urethral swab in men, and also a conjunctival swab. Culturing of the organism is not routinely done because of its lower sensitivity and costs involved. Treatment of chlamydia infections include antibiotics, doxycycline orally, or azithromycin. Azithromycin is preferred for pregnant women. It's important to also screen for other sexually transmitted infections. As mentioned, co-infection with gonorrhea is common. Looking for HIV and hepatitis B virus is also important. Avoid sexual activity until treatment has finished. Commence contact tracing through partner referral, patients notifying their partner about chlamydia, or provider referral where the healthcare professional can notify the partner. So in summary, chlamydia is caused by chlamydia trichomatis. It's a gram-negative bacteria and it's a, the most common cause of sexually transmitted infection. There are a lot of complications associated with chlamydia, including pelvic inflammatory disease, as well as Reiter's syndrome. Treatment is with doxycycline and azithromycin. Thank you for watching.